What's up, Airbnb Nation? This is Danny, and I'm going to demo the tool Hostfully, which is a digital guidebook and property management software. They merged with Orby Rental last year, and now they've done a website upgrade. The front end looks different, but as we'll see in the back end, it looks the same. It's still very functional. So after you go to hostfully.com, I'll provide a link, by the way, in the description down below that will have a discount. I believe it's three months, uh, two or three months of the pro host package for, uh, for free. So you can upgrade for free for a few months. Now you'll click uh, login. If you're gonna use their property management platform, you click here. For us, we're gonna be using the guidebooks. It'll open up a new tab, add your username and, and password. No, tr no, no trickiness yet. Log in and you get this screen here. Click, come over here to the left, click guidebooks, and you'll be presented with all of your guidebooks, okay? So what we're going to do is click on one of these guidebooks. You'll wanna click on the name or the image. If you click on the URL, it's simply gonna copy the URL. So we'll click on the image for this one here. And everything can be edited from this screen here. Hostly's made it very simple in that respect. Okay, so the title, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another tab here. Let's do copy this link. I'm going to open up another tab so we can see what it looks like on the front end and what it looks like on the back end. Here we see the title of your guidebook. I match the title of my guidebook to my Airbnb listing. Here, this is what the guest will see. Uh, this is, they'll see it on their phone, so it will be a little bit, it'll be like this. because it'll be the size of a phone, but nevertheless, the information is the same. Now this image we can see goes right here. Usually I recommend you add an image of the front of your house. At uh, this particular house, it's in a secluded area, so there's only one house in the area. So in this case, I decided to add this photo. If we go down, uh, if you wanna edit the location here, or you can even enter the longitude and the latitude, uh, la longitude and latitude if you're in a, a very weird uh, location where you don't have a simple address and whatnot. The address will pop automatically down here. You can also edit it. The map shows up here. Just confirm that you have that correct. And then confirm one more time that the address is correct. There's been a few instances where I'll enter one address and something like the, the zip code will change. Just ensure if it does change uh, that it doesn't affect the directions. And also I would reach out to Hostfully and let them know about this change. Anytime you change something, press save and continue. Moving on down to part two, this is the arrival cards. Check-in information, directions information, parking, they call it card, Wi-Fi card. Okay, so we'll start with check-in. If you wanna edit any of these, simply click the pencil button here and you can edit it. I'm not gonna get into every one of these back screens, it's very straightforward, but overall you wanna add the least information possible. So if you had homes in the same listing, for example, you had the same directions, the same Wi-Fi, you can actually create one card and add that to numerous listings within that card. So for example, we're in the check-in card now. So if the check-in instructions happen to be the same, let's say I have two bedrooms in my house, uh, then I could click the one listing and the two listings here. And so I created one card. It's, a, it's appearing in two digital guidebooks. Anytime you make a change here as well, you're gonna press save card and it automatically pops you down to where you were at, okay? So the check-in information, if we go back here, that's gonna be right up top, very top. Check-in time, how to gain access, Wi-Fi, we'll see that in a second. Okay, directions card, uh, this will be the last one I click on to do edit. So okay, you name the card here, however you wish. Put the info in, you can describe to the guest which ways to get there. Now, if you live in a standard spot, do not add text directions. These are useless uh, text and the guest is not gonna read it and you're going to tell the guest that you are wasting their time and the guest is gonna ignore most of your uh, text in the future. So if Google does the same thing as you're gonna type out, do not add that text. Only, said differently, only add text if, it's, if there are specific instructions to get to your house. Let's say, for example, your house uh, has the address of a long driveway or a long unit, but, but your house is maybe in the back. So you give them the address and then just say, hey, my house, when you get there, go on the driveway to the right side. All the way back, you'll see a yellow front door. That's your house.
Again, if you made any changes, you'll press save card. It'll pop you down to where you were. Parking information, Wi-Fi card. Again, parking information only communicate the essentials. So where is the information in this directions card up here? If we go to the guest view, the directions is going to be right here, getting around. We already saw where the address comes in. Now parking information, that is going to be the information added here. So again, this side is the guest view side. The layout may be different depending on what device the guest is looking at, iPad, computer, cell phone, but the information and, and, uh, and the general layout is gonna follow the same pattern. Wi-Fi card, definitely add your Wi-Fi information. That's gonna be all the way at the top here where it should be exactly. First question the guests always ask, what's the Wi-Fi? So why not tell them before they ask? Okay, and the departure card, this is going to be here under the departure section, the checkout section. Now, I do recommend you add information here. Again, as always, keep it as brief as possible. However, if you purchase my uh, property management software message templates, these are 11 message templates, very short, very to the point, that communicate the information the guest needs to know at the time they need to know it. And I, one of the things that I say is never repeat yourself. There's only very few instances where you should repeat yourself. Checkout for me is one of them. So 18 hours before checkout, about 5 p.m. the day before checkout, I send a checkout message, friendly reminder, checkouts at 11, 12, whenever your checkout is. Oh, and, and, and then I give a bullet point of the essentials. Hey, before you check out, can you do this, this, and this? Now, don't do, I recommend you don't do too many instructions. Some hosts have the guests do a proper cleaning job, have them start the dishwasher. Checking out is already a stressful day, especially if you're traveling, traveling with folks. So as a host, I don't make the guest do anything besides lock the door, turn the lights off, turn the AC off, etc. turn the TVs off. Um, I'm typically not going to, I'm just going to generally say lock the doors and, and turn off all the gas and electricity. I'm not going to say turn the TV off, turn the AC off, uh, lock the windows, lock the front door, blah, blah, blah. Guests know to do this, but just generally since it is important, especially if you uh, cleaners are going to come that day, let the guests know to check out, uh, to lock everything up and turn everything. As we come down on number three, this is where you're going to create specific information to your listing. So here I have, I'll just go over one of these which is the balcony decorations. They have in this home some native birds that are protected and so they can't do anything. Uh, the only thing, they're restricted on what they can do to keep these birds away from their deck and so they've added these really colorful, colorful type uh, ornaments to keep the birds away. But if you were to go there, you would, you would wonder what they are. So they've just preemptively said, hey, these are uh, for the birds so they don't come too close. If they do come too close, they are protected so you can't really do anything to them. Okay, and then I have added house rules. So this is generally what, what I suggest. You add a house rules section. I also uh, suggest you add whether or not you can uh, drink water. Drink the water right out of the, right out of the tap. Um, a lot of, it's every place you go, I guess that's, at least my question is one of my first questions, can I drink the water? Now this is all, I do all of this for you. If you purchase the guidebook creation, I'll create a guidebook for you through Hostfully. Uh, right now, I think Hostfully is the best digital guidebook. And so you can purchase directly from me. I'll, I'll ask you to fill out some information. I'll use that information to fill out all of this. But if you, you should still know how to use this and especially how to edit it as you will have to do that. Uh, I edit mine once every few months going forward. Now this information here is going to be communicated in the house rules section. Okay, we have four cards here the balcony decorations, and then for one of them, uh, I have a picture with a link to a video. Uh, it's uh, the door. So this is a good example of something specific to your unit. This door is tricky to open and to close, specifically to close. So I created a 90 second video, uploaded it to YouTube so the guests can see. I got a, how, and by the way, how did I do this? I recommend always, like I said already a few times, the, 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 few, the least information, the better. But I had many guests consistently reach out and say, hey, we couldn't get this door closed. How do we get this door closed? Okay, well, they, it's beautiful. They just told me what they need to know, okay? Uh, if one guest were to ask me that, I would not add this information. But it became a consistent pattern, so then I added this information based on that pattern first. Recommendations card, uh, tell the guest the best, the best, one. A lot of hosts, uh, 
give the best three, four grocery stores, the best three, four cafes, the best three, four of a lot of these things. No, no, just give the best one or maybe two. If it's like a restaurant, maybe two, but I recommend give the best one of each category. And then if the guest wants to know more, then you can add more. Again, if you give a really awesome cafe recommendation and you notice guests are asking for more recommendations consistently, then add a second recommendation in there. But only add to the guidebook after there's a very consistent communication of information to you where you're having to answer the same thing over and over. That's a great opportunity to put that in your guidebook. It's a great way to increase the guest experience while automating the processes on your end. And keep in mind, the guest does not want to reach out to you. That's why this digital guidebook is so important. The guest, as a guest, I'm in an Airbnb right now in Mumbai, India, and I'm creating a list uh, by day. I'm here for a month. I'm, I'm creating a list by day what, I, what the things I had to reach out to the host for, and I'm going to create a video on this upon checkout. I don't want to reach out to the host. Uh, one of them was how to use the um, the stovetop here. It's I've traveled over 600 days on Airbnb, uh, so it's not me. <laughs> a lot of people are going to have the same question. Um, it's specific to India or I don't know where, but it's, it's nowhere I've been uh, uses this, the use of Spark. So I created a video for the host and I sent it to the host and I said, hey, this, uh, please use this in your digital guidebook, which they don't have. But I don't want to reach out to the host and say, hey, how do you use this? There was a back and forth delay. Um, I just bought some food from the grocery store, looking forward to cooking, and then I realized I don't know how to turn this on. So then I had to wait for the cleaner to come. That, that was like a few hour delay. Totally, totally, totally unnecessary, especially if the guest is there. What if the guest is there for one day? Uh, that's a three-hour delay on a 24-hour stay or even less. So the guest does not want to ask you anything that's standard. Personalize their experience, but don't monopolize their time. Now, again, if you updated anything, you just press save and continue. And finally, the host information. So if we go to the, the guest-facing guidebook, we'll go to the front here. If we scroll down, I oh, know it's if you click this, uh, this, this is called a hamburger menu. It's common on mobile devices, and this is a mobile-friendly website, so it makes sense. This is where you'll get it. And I'm going to share the text with you here, which is important. It's a subtlety. A lot of the things I do are in the subtleties. They're between the lines. They're in the details. But it matters. So the host information, uh, if you want to edit this, again, you'll click this little button. Uh, again, I should add, actually, number three. If you wanted to edit this, well, you'll click the select edit thing. Don't mean to insult your in intelligence, but it's a new tool, and so uh, there's a lot going on here, so I figure I'll just be very, very straightforward. You'll click edit, and then you'll click here. If you were to, if you were to be on sort, and you click here, ah, it looks like it's also going to edit. Okay, I think they updated that. I didn't think it used to do that. So you can click either, and it brings you back to where you were, which is nice. On this one up here, if you click. Here, I'm guessing they also updated that. Okay, so both of those you can edit by just clicking. You don't have to click into the select edit area. If you wanted to click into the select edit area, these are all the cards I have for all of the guidebooks in my host fleet. If I wanted this back deck area to show up in this guidebook, then I could. I would just simply click here. Okay, so these are the three or four that are showing up in this guidebook. We'll go down to number four, the host profile. Again, we'll click the edit button. I have added the host name, the host email, and uh, the host phone number. I communicate the phone number a different way because I am not. I am in a different time zone, and so I don't want the host calling me because uh, or the guest. Excuse me. I don't want the guest calling me because uh, I'm not going to be available to answer most of the time. So I communicate that information in my ch in my check-in info three days before check-in, or my check. I communicate this info in my check-in message sent through Airbnb based on those templates I messaged earlier, and that's sent four days before check-in. Most of the time that you're gonna have a phone here, a phone number I should clarify. And to be honest, I could even add the, the emergency contacts phone number here if I wanted. Host profile picture, I say add it. And then here, this is, here's where the, here's where the number is communicated, uh, since it's a different person, so I, I didn't wanna put Michael's number in my in uh, in my named section. So then here's the interesting part. Um, if at any time you feel your stay dips below a five-star experience, please get in touch with me immediately so I can remedy the situation. All suggestions for improvements, welcome. What I'm doing here is I'm subconsciously communicating to the guest that they're experiencing a five-star reservation. I do this three times throughout the process. 
and this is the second time, the middle time. And so because Airbnb is different than hotels, there's a whole wide range of prices. Well, I take the proactive stance and I communicate to the guests. I let them know to expect a five-star stay. I let them know with this message, uh, they should be experiencing a five-star stay. And then upon checkout, I'll say, hey, um, just reminding them that they received a five-star stay. And that helps, I believe, for them to rate me a five-star uh, reservation upon checkout in case they weren't in case they weren't sure okay well this was a good listing for sure but it could be better for these reasons so I'm gonna give it a four which I think is great uh, and I do it where and when in reality uh, that, that was the guest thought process when in reality a four is a fail a five is a pass four is a fail all right and this um, most of the time you're just gonna have one hopefully uh, free for one account and if you change anything, you press save card. These settings, if you wanted to add it into a different language, you would click here. Your custom URL is available on the, the upgraded version. Otherwise, it'll just be a, a random URL, which is fine to be honest. This voice service has to do with an Echo or Dot or Google Home. I have not used it. If you have used it, let me know in the comments section how it functions and if it works properly. And then number five, you could, if you wanted to, remove all the sensitive data like the Wi-Fi information, the check-in information, how to, how to access your home, and just send uh, recommendations to someone if you wanted. And you would just simply click yes here. I'm gonna turn that off. And then all the changes you made, finally, you're going to say publish changes. And that's that. So in summary, after you log in, you're going to click the guidebooks section here. And then you're going to click the image of whatever digital guidebook you want to edit. If you want to see the digital guidebook, how the guest would see it, click the URL, which will automatically copy it. Open a new window, paste that URL in that window, and there it is. Further, to see it on a, a iPad kind of device, you can put your window kind of halfway through. If you want to see what it looks like on a phone, then I would thin out the window. Even. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this demo of how to edit your existing Hostfully digital guidebook. Again, be sure to give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. If, if you would be so kind, please subscribe to my channel. On any video, you can comment on, on videos, future videos that you want me to make. Happy hosting, everyone.